Hello, everybody. This is Greg Alexander, and welcome to the SBI Podcast. I have a fascinating guest that I've been looking forward to speaking with today. The product roadmap is the lifeblood of every product-based company, yet few members of our audience grasp the relevance to their functional areas. Our expert today is a top product leader with a unique background in strategic planning. The reason that her planning background excited me is that not only is she an expert in product development, but she's also an expert in strategic planning. I guess is the perfect expert to help connect the dots between the product roadmap and the functional teams of sales and marketing. I just loved the American success story of our expert, a Ukrainian mathematician who immigrated to the United States and earned her M MBA from MIT Sloan School of Management. She applied her education as a management consultant at AT Kearney and joined Elsevier 10 years ago to lead strategy and for the last seven years has led product. So this is a fantastic show. I encourage you to listen to it. And if you're in sales and marketing, you should forward this show to your product leader. And hopefully that will stimulate a conversation that helps product marketing and sales work better together. So enjoy the show. Welcome to the SBI Podcast, offering CEOs, sales and marketing leaders ideas to make the number. Welcome to the SBI Podcast, a weekly broadcast dedicated to helping you make your number by getting your peers to share with you how they are making theirs. Today we're going to demonstrate how to use the product roadmap to paint a picture of happy customers well into the future. So why this topic? Future revenue growth sits in the product roadmap, use cases and requirements backlogs. Today's revenue producing products become tomorrow's commodities as the competition quickens its development cycle. Building blockbuster products requires moving from legacy market listening techniques to advanced feedback systems. Long lead times starting with robust requirements have been replaced with short lead times starting with use case iterations based on real-time product feedback and analysis. My name is Greg, Greg Alexander. I'm the CEO of SBI and I'm your host. And helping me today with our demonstration is an executive who knows an awful lot about this topic. Her name is Ella Balagula and she is the Senior Vice President and General Manager of Engineering and Technology Solutions for Elsevier. Ella, welcome to the show and please introduce yourself to the audience. Hi Greg, thanks for having me. Um, I work for Elsevier. We're an information analytics company that specializes in science, technology, and health. And I manage a product that serves engineers, people who are really at the forefront of making the world a better place. Novel is an engineering decision support solution that enables engineers to confidently answer technical questions, drawing up upon um, comprehensive trusted sources of more than 130 providers through cloud-based platform with powerful search and interactive analytics tool. So I get a fun job of managing that. Okay, fantastic. All right, so I'm going to jump into the questions here. So my first one is, um, how do you prioritize feature requests? So it's interesting, Greg, because you said something about use cases and customers. And I think I'm going to turn this around and say it's really not about the features anymore. Features are means to an end, and our entire product management philosophy is centered around customer needs, use cases, and outcomes. We don't look at the product as a discrete set of features, but really rather a solution to customer pain points that delivers tangible outcomes. And then, once you get that, the prioritization becomes really easy because the request could come from anywhere. It could come from sales, from customers, from product managers. But then we ask ourselves, if there is a request for you know, what you would traditionally call a feature, does it deliver value? Does it move the needle for the customer? Does it get a better answer to them faster? And do we have a proof point that gives us the confidence that a particular feature or a set of features can actually deliver value. So we don't talk about features functionality. We ask our salespeople to do solution selling and focus on the overall value rather than set of features. Okay. So I've got a few more questions regarding features here in the first segment. So this is going to be interesting. And the reason why I, the reason why I do is I think, I think the executives that are working in product today have a, a more advanced understanding of 
outcomes, as is the word that you use, then the sales team. I mean, I, I hear all the time from sales who obviously we work very closely with that, you know, hey, if we just had this golden feature, you know, if I just grouped these features into themes, boy, my life as a salesperson would be a lot easier. I would sell a lot more. Or my competitor has this advantage over me, which is a feature. If I need to be at parity, so I need that feature. So, so you know, how? So tell me how you would react to those types of comments. I would, and, and you know, this is a very real life conversation because my salespeople constantly come and ask that question. But I think the way we turn this around, we say theme is absolutely important, and value is important. But you're not going to talk to customer about a particular feature because, frankly, they couldn't care less. They have a problem, and they need to, you to tell me how you're going to solve that problem. So they, a, a good salesperson in the first sales conversation is not going to ask, talk about features at all, right? They're only going to ask questions, and they're going to ask questions about the pain points and the problems that the customer is trying to solve, and then the conversation is going to turn into this is how our product delivers value. It could be through a particular theme in which you anchor that. But we, we try to avoid the feature because those are really means to an end. And that's, I find that a very old way of selling. We put a lot of effort into training our salespeople on customer outcome. In the last year or so, we went to 40 of our customers and we collected what we call case studies. We asked them, what's the problem you're trying to solve? And you, Mr. Engineer, how are you, what's your role in solving that problem? And then we asked them, how do you use novel to solve that problem? So the conversation really stops being about which button you push or, you know, which Dropbox. It's not about the feature. It's about getting to the answer faster. Okay, so let's stay on that for a moment because that, that was, that was uh, a very good explanation. So salesperson walks in to meet a customer, what problem are you trying to solve? Then that salesperson says, what is your role in solving that problem? Then it's, you know, how are you going to use this solution to solve that problem? The, the fourth component there, which I'd love to get your perspective on because you mentioned it a few times, is, is what's the outcome? So I deploy your solution, it solves my pain, but solving my pain is not an outcome. Right. So how do you, how do you, I guess, originate the outcome and inject that into that conversation? Yeah, you know, that's where metrics come into picture, right? Because we've become in the last couple of years so much smarter about how we capture metrics. Because the outcome, you're absolutely right, it's not about a hypothetical pain point. It is about getting to an answer. So in case of engineers, I had a question, I needed an answer because I needed to plug it in into my modeling software. And that is an outcome in a way. But then we work with customers to really translate it to the institutional value. What's the value to your company? How did you truly deliver value? And, and that's where we anchor it. However, so that would be a qualitative type of discussion, but I really encourage our salespeople and my product managers to think quantitatively and data-driven. We know through web analytics, through um, usage analytics, everything that customer does on our product. So can you collect the data and start driving the insights of how the problems were solved faster? Did the customer get to the answer? Were they satisfied with that answer? And how can we imply that through usage analytics? Yeah, very interesting. Focused on outcomes, doing away with features. This is a really good segment. Okay, we're gonna take a quick break from the interview to invite you to participate in a remarkable experience. I'd like to personally invite you, audience members, to the studio. The studio is a multi-million dollar, one-of-a-kind, state-of-the-art executive briefing center located here in beautiful Dallas, Texas. It was developed by SBI specifically for executive teams like you, those that sit inside of companies with aggressive revenue growth goals who don't have a lot of time to waste and have a lot on the line. Let's face it, to grow your revenues faster than your industry and your competitors every month, quarter, and year, it's pretty hard to do. A visit to the studio increases the probability of making your number because the sessions are built on the proven strength and stability of people like Ella. So if this is something that you're interested in, please visit our website, salesbenchmarkindex.com forward slash the studio to book your visit. This is the SBI Podcast. We'll be back in 20 seconds.
Meet Jake, the VP of sales for a growing tech company and an avid runner. During his marathon training, he listens to SBI podcasts. Dedicated to helping you make your number. This way, he can stay in shape and stay on top of the emerging best practices in sales and marketing. Your job as a sales ops team is to make the sales team more efficient. Now that he's mastered the eight minute mile, he's planning to make his number and take over the top sales spot in the tech world. So watch out competition, Jake is right behind you. Help the audience understand how you prioritize those accounts. And he just got his second win. How do you SBI? Podcast, video podcast, blog, TV, magazine. Access it all on the new SBI app, available now in iTunes. Welcome back, everybody. You're listening to the SBI Podcast. This is your host, Greg Alexander, and today's guest is Ella Balagula, the Senior Vice President and General, Managing, General Manager excuse me, of Engineering and Technology Solutions at Elsevier. And today we're demonstrating how to manage the product roadmap. So we're going to jump back into our questions. So Ella, my next question is regarding kind of velocity of product releases. Again, we come from the sales and marketing world and they always want the product teams to be fast. Give me the next great thing to sell. So how do you, how do you organize and, and kind of deploy a release schedule? Yeah, that's a great question because speed is the most important and I'm with them because I always want my product managers to be faster <laughs> as well. However, I think because our roadmap is really theme focused and fluid, and it's not really rigid. We continuously iterate. Um, we have an inter iterative continuous flow of releases because we're not focused on getting out a set of features, but it's much more about theme. So, for example, theme is personalization. Yep. And for the next year or so, we're going to be focusing on that as well as improvement of search. First of all, when you are improving your search and information management products, you're never done. Mm. So we're always going to continue to improve and continue to do releases that will give users a tangible sense of how the product is improving. Personalization, similarly, you're never done. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that's why we have a continuous set of releases. We strive for continuous improvement of outcomes of themes that we choose. And, and well, because we focus on customer value and we commit to a handful of critical themes and we just keep driving them forward, so it stops being a conversation of, you know, is it going to be every six-week release or every three-week release? I think most important is that you're going to see improvement on theme. Okay, very good. So if I understand correctly, so you, do you not have a product roadmap? Has that been replaced with kind of... No. <laughs> and it may seem that we are very fluid and casual in our product roadmap and management effort. And in fact, we are incredibly rigid in how we measure what we do. We don't commit to anything until there is both qualitative and quantitative proof points that what we're going to be doing is actually going to deliver value to customers. We, even before we fully build, we start small tests, proofs of concept, through A-B testing, we get to the, those proof points, and then when we fully launch, we continue monitoring usage metrics. So it's a continuous measurement, but we absolutely have a roadmap. With, we could have some major, major releases. We don't do them because we're not um, a consumer-based product. We're not a trip advisor that needs to do you know, two releases per day. We do releases every few months, but we absolutely have a roadmap that has teams. However, we don't commit. It's not at the beginning of the year saying annual, this is the set, fixed set of features, and this is what's going to be. We are committing to improving a certain metric that is important for us. So, for example, for us, the metric that we all live and breathe in is monthly active users. So we're committing to improvement of monthly active users that is stickiness in the product, but we are not saying how exactly we're going to get that. We're going to learn throughout the year, and we're going to iterate. Yep. Okay. So, Make sense? Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Um, you kind of walked us through your decision gates, if you will, and, and that was uh, much more structured and disciplined than I had thought based on your, your, your earlier comments. Um, 
One of, one of our themes, if you will, that we talk to our clients about is the importance of strategic alignment. And what I mean by that is that the product marketing and sales strategies have to be kind of rowing the boat in the same direction in order for us to have success. So as you think about those decision gates that you laid out for me, is, is sales and marketing involved in those at all, or do they have gates you know, as launch gets closer and closer? Absolutely, Greg, and I think that's the most important thing, to be fully aligned with sales, product, and marketing on, first of all, where are we going to play, what are our strategic segments of choice, which themes are we going to win in and commit to, and then as we start moving product through these decision gates, if you will, everybody has to be fully bought in. There is incredible clarity of what level of metrics opens the gate, and if they're not open, they're closed. <laughs> so, um, yeah. And I think what's also very important is that we actually started moving last year or so from a very traditional first build and then sell to first sell and only then commit large resources to building. We go to customers with a prototype, and we communicate the value. We sit in those conversations together with sales. That's critical because, first of all, you get sales buy-in from the very beginning, but you also get a deep understanding of buying process, decision makers, what does it take to sell this product? And we ask a customer, look, this is a cardboard car. You get the idea of what it does. It doesn't get from zero to 16, say, eight seconds yet, but if we build it and this is what it does, would you buy it? Are you committing to buy? Mm. And we get those commitments and we start working with customers as development partners before we invest, before we start building. And that's critical. And often they would say, no, this is not enough. And we go to the drawing board and we rethink our minimal viable product and we pivot. Yeah. And I think that's been incredibly valuable for us. Yeah, very good. Okay. All right, this is a good spot for us to take another break. So would you like to implement some of the things Ella has spoken to you about today? If so, I think we can help you. Consider having one of our experts spend some time with you in a workshop. If you want to get a feel of what's covered in this workshop, go to sbi.tips forward slash 2017 workbook, and you can download a copy of the workbook that we use in these workshops and get a feel for the exercises. Okay, we got one more segment with Ella after the break. We'll be right back. This is not a table. It is a stage where your performance is measured in numbers. If you reach them, you get an encore. If you don't, it could be curtains. That's why you need the well-rehearsed, proven sales and marketing strategies of SBI. Okay, this is our last segment with Ella demonstrating how to manage a product roadmap. We're going to jump back into our questions. So Ella, when you think about the product roadmap, we just talked about how product marketing and sales stays connected through that plus many other things that you're doing. If we go up market now, so to speak, and we think about how to plug you know, your product strategy and specifically the product roadmap into the corporate strategy, how do you align your product roadmap process to the strategic vision outlined in the corporate strategy? Yeah, I think that that's very important, and that's, you know, that's, that's the anchoring point for all our efforts. I think first and foremost, we pick certain market segments that are attractive to us. could be for a variety of reasons, whether it's because we're strong in them today or we feel, we feel that we can win there. Through our, so in our market, for example, we have a unique trifecta of content, technology, and domain expertise. Then we do dive, deep dive to understand customer use cases, workflows. But most importantly, we anchor into where we're going to play, what are the markets, and that's alignment with corporate strategy. Then we look for big, meaty problems that drive progress of humanity. And it's big issues like health and wellness or energy sustainability or materials revolution. So, for example, we're developing a product now focused on material selection in chemical industry. We focused on chemical industry. We said material re materials revolution is driving a need for people to start selecting the right material and connect research data with environmental data and 
supplier pricing and all of those. So um, can we help that? And that's when it starts going into product yeah. plan, the product roadmap. But we start with market, we focus on a big meaty problem, and we translate it into what it means to customers. Okay, very good. And a as you're going through this process, I mean, we're living in a very exciting time where it seems like new emerging technology is popping up frequently. So how does your roadmap and your product strategy overall allow you to take advantage of these emerging opportunities created by new technologies? Greg, this is just the most exciting time to live in because the digitization that is becoming the new way of life and the new normal opens tremendous opportunities. We are constantly looking at artificial intelligence and machine learning capabilities that completely transform the speed, quality, and the cost of our product development efforts. What used to be a manual curation and processing of content now can be done so much faster and with so much more predictive analytics power through machine learning. And we develop deep capabilities that allow us to do things that were simply not possible even five years ago at unprecedented speed and scale. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And you and your process is set up to take advantage of those things as they present themselves. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Because we we constantly look at new capabilities, but because we're large companies, so Elsevier overall invested in machine learning. Mm -hmm. We employ world class computational linguists to be able to process content. So if you pick a couple of things that for your industry are going to be important from the technology capability. In our case, it's information processing. In other cases, it could be Internet of Things and connected devices and sensors. But once you figure out what it is, you gotta invest in talent and capability to take advantage of that. Yep, okay. All right, so my last question here, and this is uh, contextual given our audience. So how does your product team collaborate with sales and marketing when defining your strategy and when certain things are going to be released and who they're going to be brought to, et cetera, et cetera? Yeah, I think that's really important for us to to do this, you know, kind of shoulder to shoulder. We are in it together, and that's the mm -hmm. attitude that product management and salespeople take. Every product manager, first of all, needs to go on a several customer calls every month. And that's, you know, that's in their objective because they need to be there, they need to listen, but they can also bring a lot of value into the conversation. But they allow us to close the loop and hear firsthand from the customers what their needs are, but also what challenges our salespeople are discovering. Until you put people in the car together in a sales call, um, it's all going to be theoretical, right? But it's amazing what type of collaboration you can achieve through this commitment um, to go to customers together. Uh, we also constantly hear sales feedback. We look through CRM notes, and we have conversations with our salespeople. And closing that feedback loop, telling us what you need, is incredibly important. Yeah. So, so that collaboration is kind of both in terms of you know objectives are aligned, but it's also intangible. It's the culture, and it's because it's all centered around the customer. Yeah, okay, fantastic. Ella, unfortunately, we are out of time, but uh, on behalf of my audience, I want to thank you for your generosity. You gave us your time today and contributed to uh, our wisdom and knowledge bank, and I think everybody got a little bit smarter today. So thank you so much. Thanks, it's a pleasure. Okay. I want to thank the SBI audience for tuning in as well. Uh, last month, we hit a milestone in that we crossed over 50,000 downloads for a single episode, which is pretty impressive for this podcast. This kind of response encourages us to keep pushing and putting out the show. Thank you for your continued support. If you want to learn more about this topic or the other areas that we focus on, go to salesbenchmarkindex.com forward slash register. Now, why might you want to do that? This allows you to personalize your experience with our content. For instance, you can choose the topics you're interested in and how often you want to learn about them. Okay, that's it for today. As always, until next time, I wish you good luck as you try and make your number. This has been the SBI Podcast. For more information on SBI services, case studies, the SBI team and how we work, or to subscribe to our other offerings, please visit us at salesbenchmarkindex.com.